I need a passport photo. Not for a passport, but uh, we're traveling to Italy and they need an international license. So I need to take a picture that is a passport photo. I could, you know, pay and have someone do it, but as a professional photographer, I mean, <laughs> come on. I should be able to do it myself. So, uh... <laughs> so I thought I'd bring you along. Not so much that maybe you need to do a passport photo, but more so what my thought process is. I'm sure I can help at least one person out there when you think about lighting and powers and camera setup and focal lengths and all that stuff. So the first thing that I'm going to use is a dummy. <laughs> and uh, this is actually a great way to improve your photography. I made a video call called how to get ahead <laughs> in your photography. I'll link it up below, but this dummy helps me a lot with camera position, with lighting distance. So I recommend getting yourself a little mannequin head that's not too scary looking because I mean, Sometimes it's in the office and I turn around and it's kind of like. So the first thing I want to do is have my stand in be the same exact height um, as me. So that is going to be our dummy. <laughs> All right, and for the camera, I have a Road Trip Pro tripod. That's the second thing you need is a tripod. Now my actual stronger tripod is holding this camera right now so that you could see me. But this will do. Next thing you're gonna need is a camera. That's right, you could probably do this on your phone. We should probably try it on the phone to see if we could do it on the phone, but that's too much work. So we're gonna use the Fujifilm X-T3 here because I want to test the remote app a little bit better. And the first thing I'm gonna do is put the camera on a tripod and I'm gonna put it vertical because I'm gonna take all my shots in portrait mode. Uh, we'll talk camera settings in a second. I'm just thinking ahead. If I pause and I go, um, <laughs> it's because my mind is cooking on how to figure this out. And for focal length for a regular old um, passport photo, I'm going to use 50 millimeter as the crop in. So I have the 35 millimeter F2 on there. And that's what we're going to use for that. Okay, and then next you're going to need some kind of white background or white uh, sheet or white uh, wall or anything that is white for the background to be neutral. So I happen to have a big double-sided Lasto light. I got this to do headshots with, you know, instead of having gray paper. I've used the paper before, but when you're doing headshots on location, the paper is kind of a pain because you need a whole you know, whole mounting setup on either side. This can be mounted with one light stand. And one thing I wanna do is make sure I keep it far away from me because I, I want it to go blurry in the background because if it's too close or right behind me, um, it's gonna to be too much in focus. So then if there's like any kind of wrinkle or any kind of mark on the sheet, it'll show up in the shot. So I'm thinking to put it a little bit further back from where I'm sitting. Can you still see me? Hey. All right, I didn't even clamp it or anything since it's just me here. Uh, hold on, we got these little strappies. Uh, I didn't put a clamp or anything on it because it's just me here, but if I was doing a headshot session or something, I would clamp, clamp it so it wouldn't fall on, but it's just me, it could fall on me. You might hear the family in the background. Everybody's home today. <laughs> Okay, so although we have a white background, it's not really going to be white if we use a flash on me because of something called the inverse square law. Basically, the light will get darker the further you put a background behind you. So if I had the background right up against me, I wouldn't need a backlight. But since I'm putting the background a little further back, I'm going to have to light it up to make it white, okay? If I didn't have a light, we should probably show you that. We, pr we should probably show you what it looks like without a background light. The lights I'm using, just so you know, I'm using the Westcott FJ200 as the main light and the FJ82 uh, as the rear light. I also have a little grid on the back in case I need to control the light a little bit more. We'll see if we have to do that. This is the fun part. We're just figuring things out. Okay, I mounted the FJ200 on this S bracket. This is called an S bracket here. And for my modifier, I am using a Glow Easy Box. This is actually what I use for YouTube. This is a, what is this? 34 inch beauty dish. The smaller light that you use, the more flashy and harsher it will look. 
But this is a passport photo. It's probably okay if it looks bad. <laughs> this is probably the one type of portrait you can get away with looking scared and terrible. Okay, we got a little flash remote here on the uh, Westcott FJ Johnson X3M. And the first thing I want to do is make sure I pick my brand. So right now it's set to Sony. I'm going to put Fuji on there. So that's what's great about this. This is like a multi-brand, since I shoot with multi-brands. All right, so for camera settings, I'm gonna go F8 on the lens. I'm gonna hit the sync speed at 250 and lock it in there. I'm also going to pick my own ISO, which is 200. And the reason I'm picking those settings is because I wanna get rid of all this room light. And what we'll do is we'll take one test photo to make sure the test photo comes out black. The first thing you'll notice is I don't see anyone there. So what you want to do is turn your live view. Uh, so if you go to, I have it on my menu, but you want to preview white balance and manual mode. You want that off. And once you turn that live preview off, you can actually see what you're doing, <laughs> which is great. All right, I'm on eye autofocus there, uh, F8, 250, ISO 200. And the reason I have those settings is because I want to take a test shot first to make sure that there is no amb let me take the trigger off so you can see. I'm gonna take one photo and let's play it back. It's amazing. That's what you want. You kind of want no ambient light whatsoever. Okay, let's put the trigger back on and back button focus, fire. And let's see if we guess correctly. I said eighth power. Let's see if, uh, oh, that looks properly exposed, but you notice how the background is gray. I'm getting some of the, <laughs> What am I getting in that shot? Oh, I'm getting the top of it. Got it. Hmm. We need to raise our background. Okay, we raised our background. Let's see, uh, do another shot. Back button focus, bam. Nice, we got a nice shadow under the chin and our we have our background, but if you notice, the background is gray, which is what I was talking about. Now, now if you only have one light, that's totally fine. You can actually take this back into the computer and completely whiten it up artificially. That's no big deal. But let's try to do it with lights so that we kind of can see what's going on. So I'm going to turn on that backlight. I'm going to put it on, I guess, the eighth power. Let's move this over just a little bit for a better composition. There we go. She's not even looking at me. Here we go. Oh, we got a little bit of a halo in the back, <laughs> which is not what we wanted. But this is why you test things. Let's take the grid off put the light closer to myself because I'm thinking I want it to spread more. And I may lower the power because, uh, let's just see what it does, hold on. Here we go. Let's play that back, see what happened. Okay, so I'm kind of lit up behind me, which is what I want, but it's too bright. So I was wrong about that power. So I'm gonna lower that, but okay. It still looks great to me. <laughs> Let's, if I cared more, I would put a modifier on that backlight to make sure everything's really white, you know, um, but for now, I think this is good. Okay, I was gonna use the remote app to do this, but uh, the remote app wasn't installed on my phone for some reason, and I tried to install it, and Fujifilm wanted permission for everything, my location, all my photos, even... <laughs> anyway, uh, so we're gonna do it old school. I just put a two-second timer on. I've already pre-focused to this location. I'm at F8, so it should be in focus, and I also don't have shutter focus turned on. I'm a back button focuser. So now when I reach over, can you see that? When I reach over, you can't see that. <laughs> I'm gonna reach over to the camera and hit boom. Here we go. Oh yeah. Uh, the only thing I'm thinking is this light is so far from me. Uh, I might want it just a little closer so that I feel the frame more as a headshot and getting the light closer will look better. But anyway, let's see what we got. Okay, now I'm doing what those annoying YouTubers do. Hold a lav mic as a mini mic. <laughs> so that looked good to me. That filled the frame a little bit more. A little bit too much though. So I'm going to pull back just a bit.
Okay, this video is not sponsored by anyone, so I could use whatever I want. So I'm switched to the Nikon Z6 II just so that I could try with the app a little bit. The SnapBridge app is a little easier to connect to. You don't have to sign your life away or give all the permissions on your phone away. It just works. So I can frame myself up. You see me there? Mm. And then it gives you, you can actually pick the photo. Yo, yo. Cool, cool, cool. I look a little scared though. <laughs> All right, let's try again. So now I'll just take a couple and we'll pick the best one and then print it. So all that's left is to just cut them. And so what did we learn from this whole experience? We probably learned that it's better to just pay the 20 bucks and let them do it. <laughs> what a pain. With that said, doing this kind of stuff is great for your, you know, you're cooking, you're cooking and you're learning what your gear does, you're practicing with lighting. So what I learned from this is I probably didn't need the backlight because I ended up in Lightroom lightening up the background anyway and removing some sensor spots. Something else I did learn that shooting tethered or with the app is the way to go because shooting blind with the Fujifilm, I got one in focus I was totally happy with. And then for some reason it kept focusing on my nose. And um, yeah, I probably should have done a better job at pre-focusing and sitting down but it was just getting so hot here in the office that I was just like, let me use an app. And the Nikon app just connected really quickly and that worked better. Really the best way to learn about lighting and what your camera does is just to kind of just play all the time and practice. So if you want to get better, every day you should be doing something, whether it's practicing your focus modes or just putting a flash on the camera and trying things. I'm always trying things and always practicing and trying things with different lenses and yeah. So uh, I guess that's the point of this video. <laughs> Although we got passport photos. All right, I'll see you guys next time.